Hey guys, welcome to the second video of the Road Back to Olive Drive. Uh, today's video, we are pretty much just doing an overview of the whole Jeep and the condition she is in her current state, and also detaching her from the frame of the Jeep. Bolts and welds and all. Yes, the tub was a little bit welded to the frame, unfortunately. So here I am going around the Jeep, have a good overview so you can see it. Um, it's kind of hard unless you look. There's a bump right there on the tailgate where plate steel has been welded in place of whatever was originally there. Uh, the job boxes are a little bit rotted and roached. Uh, the whole floor pan's been uh, pop riveted over with some sheet metal. Uh, here we are looking at the battery tray with a jerry-rigged uh, concoction on top of it with two uh, all-thread bolts just kind of welded there. Later we cut those off. Um, there's a little bit of the worst condition of the frame. It's a little bit delaminating the steel. It's not even delaminating, but the rot makes it look delaminated right there on that part of the frame. And then underneath the uh, tube, there's that iconic tube rot from where the water pools. Only on the left side, but I think I'll replace the whole tube and then patch that section of frame with some uh, steel I get from the local, uh, mo local supplier. Uh, I don't think I'm going to buy it that whole section of frame to replace. The top part is good, it's just the bottom part that needs replacing. There's the right side, showing that it really doesn't need that much work done on it. Um, what else can I see here to show you? Uh, that fender we work with, it's still on there because it's welded to the frame. Uh, I'm just still giving a little overview of the whole uh, Jeep right now. Uh, what is there? The little foot rest right there, is, it's welded there. It's It's there on the body for sure now um there's the uh fuel sump it's pop riveted in there with some other sheet metal uh pretty much sheet metal and just one eighth inch plate steel like everywhere on this jeep you can see that floor pan's completely i guess layered it's layered because the old one's still there underneath but um it's not ideal so that'll be going away looks like i'm gonna be half building my own tub uh there's the inside of that wall. Doesn't look too bad. Looks like someone's messed with some body filler there. Uh, sorry guys, I didn't really have a plan for this video. Uh, yeah, there's the job box. I'm just showing all the damage and stuff all around the, not damage, but rot and the patchwork, patch job to keep it together. There's the, the right there you can see the plate steel. It's an eighth inch thick. I'm still showing the job boxes, but inside the rear foot, the second floor, I guess, the rear floor, that's all got an eighth inch, like, sheet metal going down the sides of the toolboxes and then on the floor itself. And then you can see the weird, like, generic uh, floor hats that are on the back support. That's not proper. <laughs> um, you can see the stuff was pulled off the outside of the job boxes and put on the side of the plate steel. There's the welded uh, shock tower coverings and there's a close up of the 1 8 inch uh, sheet steel that's been put over top of the body and it's welded to the body it looks like on the rear floor so I'm going to see about cutting that off or if I'm just going to take it out with the floor because that does need to be replaced the strongest smell is the front cow but there's sections on that that need some love too there's the weld on the floor. I didn't really focus on it too well. Um, yeah. Rear cross member. Seen better days. Where the pintle hitch goes. That's kind of... Oh, uh, yeah. It's just seen better days. I'll see about if I can rehab that. Um, you'll see in future videos probably. What I do with it. Um, Gibbs oil. It's great. Uh, that's the front license plate bracket. Someone welded to the frame. There's the T84 uh, transmission. You guys probably know more about that transmission than I do, but at least it's a wartime transmission, I hope. Uh, front axle. There's the bell housing. Engine's already on a stand, as you saw in the previous video. <laughs> yep, I'm just showing you the condition of the Jeep right now. Underneath, there's a part of the body being welded to the frame. That funded fun to deal with. There's the rotted floor underneath the sheet steel. Uh, the handbrake right there.
Oh, that was fun. It's a nice piece of angle iron helping support, well, I guess the rear cross member. I don't know why it's really there. Kind of unnecessarily. Unnes oh, that's right. There's a piece of rot. There's some rot on that part of the frame. I forgot. I didn't take a photo of that. That was a bolt that was just so frozen it was not coming off. So I decided to just use a cut disc on it and get rid of the, not the easiest way, but <laughs> easier than trying to unscrew a really bad bolt. Um, I'm just detaching the whole body right now, removing parts, removing the clutch and brake pedals so I can uh, remove the tub without it getting hung up on those. Um, removing the fender but I later found out that bolts also frozen and I didn't have a torch to heat it up to try on it the uh, the nut on the back side was rounded out so I ended up cut disking it too but that fender is even more fun that bolts not doing much because uh well that fender is welded to the that foot piece right there and then it's also welded to the uh, the body of the Jeep so I'm still working on getting that off I managed to make some headway on it but even with the cut disc it starts getting a little bit too uh, close into the uh, body and I don't want to put a nice gash into the body so I think I might have to come back with a Dremel with one of the small rotary cut discs or maybe I'll just get a hacksaw blade and sit there for a couple hours and just <laughs> run it down between the fender and the body because I really don't want to risk the body and I'd rather not mess up the fender more than it is it still looks salvage salvageable, I guess. I do have a second fender, possibly may use instead of this one because of the whatever that's going on there. That's not proper. That's welded to the frame also. <laughs> this whole fender is welded to the frame pretty much. That's not stock, so I just cut it, just getting rid of it. There's nothing to unbolt, and I didn't want to mess with the uh, trying to shaved off the uh, frame yet so I went the easiest route and just cut through the air gap um, oh and also the, f the fenders welded to the battery bolt so going with my hack and saw method well that bolt had to go just to make more clearance for me to cut this one that's actually welded to the fender uh, <laughs> it's not ideal when you're putting on body parts when they usually are bolted on but Welding it on, I guess it's a permanent option, but it's not something I want to do. So, there you see the bolts attached, but <laughs> attached to the fender. So, I'll have to shave that off the fender. There's some of that tub damage. I thought my front cow was pretty nice and sturdy, but ends up that front corner right there it does have some rot on the inside. So, I don't know if I'll just try and lay in some sheet metal and try some MIG welding on it, or maybe even soldering it. Or brazing it in but that doesn't seem kosher so I may just um, replace that section depends once I get a better look on it and take all this paint and body filler off there I am trying to cut the weld between the body and the fender and the, the diamond plate <laughs> not ideal uh, also here's underneath where it was welded with a generic hat channel thing I end up just cutting the hat channel instead of trying to mess with the the frame. I'm trying to avoid grinding on the frame until I can get a better angle on it. I'd rather not be working on my back when I do the artistic work of removing the welds on the frame. Alright, so that's where I started hitting a wall. My cut disc was too small to get in there tight against the fender and the body where it's welded. I'm shaking the fender so you can see it wiggle. It's, it's attached, unfortunately, <laughs> right there on the body. But now looking at it, unless they did a really nice tight weld, it might be solder. It's definitely not body filler the way it's sticking to it, but maybe I'll try and take a blowtorch to it. Maybe someone heated it up and soldered it in along with the welding, but it might be weld too. Either way, I'd rather not damage the fender and the body. There I am, prime between the body and the frame trying to find out what's hanging it up there's a couple bolts that just did not want to go even when I uh, undid the uh, nuts on the bottom of them they were rust welded into place so I ended up having to beat on them a little bit prying them and then uh, end up just knocking the bolts out with a hammer well actually my ratchet because I forgot to bring a hammer I think 
right about here I'm getting close to actually having the whole body loose from the frame I'll just need to enlist some friends to uh, get it <laughs> off the frame or I might use my engine cherry picker and do some kind of four point rope system and try and lift it that way probably not the ideal way but we'll see in the next video I might try that before I try and list four guys to hang out you know social distancing don't want to bring guys into this <laughs> uh, just kidding um, thanks again for joining me for another video of the road back to Olive Drab uh, hopefully I'll get another video out to you guys soon um, it's whenever I can get out to the Jeep and work on it uh, thanks for tuning in I appreciate you guys watching the video have a great day.